Here's how the battery packs turned out. Each of these is 12 volts and then this one is 4 volts so that I can make a total of 52 volts in series if I want to power an electric motor. Otherwise I can just use each of these packs as a 12 volt source for anything I want. For example, here's a motorcycle headlamp hooked up to the 12 volt source. That might be useful as a sort of floodlight. Here's what the soldering looks like on the battery packs that had to go that way. This one was welded with a spot welder specifically designed to put battery packs together, but the welder broke, so I had to switch to the soldering. They all work. Good enough for me. Here are the lights that I'm going to use for the interior of the boat. I made them square so that they can rest flat on things and not roll around. I've been saving all these little pieces of scrap plywood, thinking that I probably won't actually find a use for them, but I think I have one now. I'm gonna put carpet over the top so the imperfections won't really matter that much. The goal is to use the engine hoist to raise the back end of the boat high enough to get this stand underneath it and take all that stuff out. got welds on here. And the reason for that is these bolts just aren't enough to hold so much weight and that makes me reassured. That's the bend that's in the tube. This piece here is to prevent the legs of the supports from moving outward. It's not quite high enough to get the keel attached. That height right there is enough to get this top part of the keel on, but not enough for the bottom. This side is not going to make it, so I'm going to have to lift it up with the engine hoist and put some blocks underneath here. When I measured this, I actually assembled the whole thing, put it over the trailer, and marked where it sat to clear the trailer. And then I raised it up that much, but it still wasn't enough. I was off by three quarters of an inch. Just use the engine hoist to do the lift. Right now the boat's 
Right now the weight of the boat is sitting on the engine hoist and that releases the pressure on the bar enough to make it bend back up. So later on after I get the boat on the trailer I'm going to redo this. I'll probably raise it up like 100 millimeters or something. The bow is approximately at the same place as this cap. And the rest of the trailer is underneath. It took about an hour to get all this done. It was so easy to move the trailer because this whole stretch has a very slight downhill maybe 1%. It was actually very effortless to move the trailer. It didn't take much strength at all. I'm going to lower it down onto these boards. These boards were free. It was from somebody's decking project. The carpet was free. Just somebody's leftover remnant. I would prefer black, but this is free. like the trailer will have to go forward a little bit more. Cooling pipes here are just about even with the runner. Over here the cooling pipes are well inside of it so this trailer needs to go that way about three inches. Now it's a little bit in. That's just a little bit in. That's perfect. Here's how it sits in front. I cannot imagine getting the weight any lower. Here's how it sits on the right side. Here's how it sits on the left side. Here's how the engine compartment sits in that V section of the trailer. Got the trailer up on blocks for right now just to spare the tires the weight while it sits until I'm actually ready to tow it. That's pretty much it for the videos about the construction of the boat. Got it on the trailer, it's ready to go. I just need to winch it out of the carport and around to the front of the property, spin it round. Here's the winch I'm going to use. I got this back when I was racing cars, just in case I crashed the car and I couldn't drive it up onto the trailer. Fortunately that never happened and it'll come in useful for getting the boat out of the driveway. I'll show you that process when I get to it, but it's going to be a few months because I have to clean up the property, get the house ready for sale, sell a bunch of stu other stuff, and make plans for the launching of the boat and what shipyard I'm going to use. I'm going to trailer it up to Puget Sound. I think Puget Sound and the Pacific Northwest is going to be a lot of fun. And that's what this boat is designed for. You can see it has no open cockpit. I designed it for an area where I'm going to get a lot of rain and for spending most of my time at anchor. I want to just go to a fjord, set the anchor for six days, enjoy that area, and then move to the next place. I have not heard from the Coast Guard yet, so I don't have my documentation. I still have to wait for that. 
that's okay. I still have a lot of time to spend getting the house ready for sale. So hopefully everything will come through for me during that time. And hopefully the borders will open back up so I can really enjoy the Canadian Pacific Northwest. Thanks for watching. It'll be a few months before I put out another video, but I'll make sure to show you the launch and what happens afterwards. I know you're interested in how long this boat lasts, how it performs, how much I like it, and improvements that I'll be making. I'm going to build the whole interior of the boat while I'm out there on the water. Give me something to do. I do have floors, benches in the cockpit area, and the bee berth area where I can sleep. But other than that, the whole interior still needs to be made. I hope you all have a great summer, and we'll see you in a few months.